Hello SpaceX fans, welcome back to another video of latest SpaceX updates. We have a ton of things to look at in this video, so without wasting any time, let's jump into the video. Today, Elon Musk announced a few exciting updates on Starship program in general. The SpaceX founder said while Booster 7 gets its robustness upgrades in the high bay, they will try to complete Booster 9 with several design changes. These design changes will include full engine RUD isolation which means a new shield for the engines that will protect damaging other engines in case of a failure. According to Musk, the orbital test flight might happen sometime in late October or November, with the latter case being most likely. He further said, SpaceX will be readying not just one but two Starship stacks for the orbital launch attempt. If Booster 7 is going to orbit, and Booster 9 will be kept on standby, you may wonder why is Booster 8 on the launch site? Well, B8 might act as another pathfinder or a backup to Booster 7. Just a while ago, Booster 7 was already removed from the orbital launch mount using the chopstick arms and will make its way back to the build site so that Booster 8 can take its place. Once Booster 7 returns to the launch pad again, it will perform a full-stack wet dress rehearsal and full 33-engine static fire test before preparing for the orbital flight. Construction of Star Factory at Roberts Road is in full swing as you can see in these amazing shots by Greg Scott during a recent flyover. Replying to a tweet, Elon said, In the second quarter of next year, the first Starship booster will arrive at Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It will not be built here at the Roberts Road facility but it will be made in Texas, transported from the port of Brownsville to Cape by boat. It will be interesting to see what kind of boat will they use to transport the world's biggest rocket. Will they use a barge like NASA's Pegasus that transported the SLS core stage tank or will they do it in Falcon 9 recovery style? No details on that yet. That's not SpaceX's main priority for now, but that's some useful information for us. Thank you Elon for being so active in providing all these insights to the fans. NASA's moon rocket. The SLS rocket encountered the same hydrogen leak issue yet again today during its cryogenic demonstration test. Okay, quick update. I'm listening to the team discuss, um, but they did have a, a detection of a hydrogen leak in the tail service mast umbilical. It's in the lower portion of the rocket. But after a few tweaks and troubleshooting, the engineers managed to refill the core stage with liquid hydrogen again and also performed an important engine bleed kickstart test on the engines. This was the seventh overall wet dress rehearsal of the SLS rocket. The first two launch attempts didn't even come close to what was achieved today. Today's testing ticked a lot of boxes. The core stage was completely filled with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen for the first time. They even pressurized the tank to launch like conditions. They also filled the upper stage with propellants. I would call this a proper wet dress rehearsal. Skipping all these tests, why did they even try to launch the multi-billion rocket in two attempts? I am sure NASA will provide an update on today's testing and the Artemis 1 launch date. From the testing point of view, today was a successful day for NASA. Let's see if they attempt to launch on September 27. They will be more confident this time. NASA released today. The latest image of Neptune is captured by James Webb Space Telescope. The image provides the clearest view of Neptune rings in decades. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of images of Neptune taken in 1989 when Voyager flew past and the new image released today from James Webb. Well that is it for now. If you liked the video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you for watching.